In today's video, I'm going to show you how I went from this to adding these DIY built-in cabinets and shelves. Hi, I'm Roxanne with The Catholic Homebody, where I talk about all things home, anywhere from DIY home improvement videos such as this one, home decor, homemaking, homeschooling, and how to apply the Catholic faith within our homes. So for more content like that, please subscribe. Now let's get into how I added these do-it-yourself built-in cabinets and shelves. First, we started off by clearing out the space to make room for the built-in cabinets and shelves around the window. We had a sideboard that held most of our homeschool stuff along with some miscellaneous kitchen items. I was not able to comfortably organize all the things that I needed, which is why we decided to tackle this DIY built-in dining room cabinet project. I wiped all the walls and baseboards down just so everything would be nice and clean before adding the cabinets. We are using unfinished kitchen base cabinets from Lowe's. These are the Project Source brand in sizes 30 inch wide and there's one 18 inch wide. In order for these to fit perfectly along the wall, we had to cut into the baseboards using an osculating tool. Because it would have been too expensive for our budget to get real countertops, we're using two 24 inch by six foot boards. I was willing to live with the middle seam versus finding a board wide and long enough. We bought a couple 12 inch by 8 foot boards in pine wood and we're just going to cut them down to the sizes that we need. We're still building our tool supply so we were just using a circular saw versus a table saw. After cutting the countertop and shelf pieces, Brian sanded and applied the pre-stain to everything while I mixed the stain. I wanted a very natural light color. We decided to mix two-thirds golden oak and about one-third early American stain colors from Minwax. As you can see, I did not use exact measurements and just eyeballed it using a plastic cup. For this staining project, I used a stain sponge to apply the stain and a clean one to wipe up as much excess stain as I could. We also gave all the boards another good sanding after they were all dry. I used four coats of polyacrylic to ensure that it would be sealed and I would have no problem wiping them down. So when it came time to painting the cabinets, we actually ran across some several mishaps. I made a lot of mistakes, including I did not sand nor prime or do any prep whatsoever prior to painting. I noticed a bunch of roughness with the woods, especially in the doors. Um, so I tried to do a light sanding in between the coats, but I still noticed a lot of roughness and I just felt like it wasn't as smooth as it should be. My second biggest mistake was I painted these cabinets in the wrong sheen. I first used Sherwin-Williams Black Magic, which I absolutely love that color. It was leftover paint that we had from a fireplace makeover project that we had done a couple of months ago. So it wasn't until the second coat though that I realized I had painted them in eggshell. And knowing that my kids will probably get these dirty, there would have been absolutely no way I would have been able to give a good scrub and clean that knowing I probably will need to eventually do. So ultimately we had to completely re-sand everything and start the painting process completely over. 
When it came to repainting the cabinets, I decided to go with my favorite black paint, which is Benjamin Moore's Black Beauty. We went with Benjamin Moore's Regal Select in a pearl satin finish, and I am so happy with the results. I used a paint sprayer for the doors and a foam roller for the bases and drawers. Using the foam roller gives it a similar finish as the paint sprayer. Once everything was finally all painted, it was time to finally put the cabinets in place. We added a big hole to the back of the middle cabinet to have access to the outlet. We also added holes to all the sides and backs of each cabinet using a hole saw. This allows us to be able to run any wires that we may need. To close the gap between the cabinets, we use scrap pieces of wood, bolts, and washers to secure them better together. We did not secure the cabinets to the actual wall. Attaching the countertop to the cabinets was surprisingly not as difficult as I thought. We just used basic screws. All we used were one inch screws and a power drill. We did decide to leave a gap between the wall and the countertop so that way we would be able to feed any wires. Once the cabinets and countertops were done, we installed the shelves. We decided to have two on the left side and only one on the right side because of the bulkhead. And here is our completed DIY built-in dining room cabinet and shelves. I am so happy that we were able to tackle this DIY built-in dining room cabinets and shelves. It has opened up this space and given me an abundant amount of organization. I am now able to comfortably organize all of my homeschool items along with it gives us a designated small office in our home. Thank you so much for watching this video and if you found it helpful, give it a thumbs up and comment below if you plan on doing DIY built-in cabinets and shelves too.